Welcome to Creative Biolabs. We provide a series of high-quality exosome-related services and products to facilitate projects. Here we like to share with you some exosomes biogenesis and therapeutics. We will introduce exosome biogenesis and therapeutics from the following four aspects. First, exosome types and characteristics. Second, exosome biogenesis. Third, the roles of exosomes in physiology and pathology. And last, exosome therapeutics and drug delivery. Before we get started, let's first briefly go through some background. Extracellular vesicles are classified into exosomes, microvesicles, and apoptotic bodies according to their origin, size, content, and corresponding markers. The specific information is shown in the table. Exosomes originate from the lysosomal pathway and are usually 40 to 120 nanometer in size. Their markers include tetraspinins, ESCRT components, PDCD6IP, TSG101, and so on. In addition, exosomes often contain various RNAs, cytoplasmic, and membrane proteins. Today, we will mainly introduce biogenesis and therapeutic applications of exosomes and microvesicles. Extracellular vesicles are nanoscale membrane vesicles which are actively released by cells. They occur through outward budding of the plasma membrane or microvesicles pathway, or inward budding by the inner body membrane or axonal pathway. The vesicles formed through outward sprouting of the plasma membrane are called microvesicles. Exosomes are vesicles of endocytic origin. The invasion of the plasma membrane inward forms the early endosome, and the limiting membrane of the later endosome sprouts further to form small vesicles, leading to the formation of multivesicular bodies, or MVB. MVB is characterized by the invagination of the inner body membrane to form the intraluminal vesicles, or ILV. During the formation of ILV, cytoplasmic inclusions, transmembrane, and peripheral proteins are integrated into them. The ILV accumulated in the MVB lumen has two different destinies. One is the fusion with the lysosome, which causes the contents of the vesicles to degrade or the fusion with the cytoplasmic membrane, which releases the vesicles to the extracellular space by exocytosis, that is the exosomes. More specifically, the role of various proteins varies in different processes and the origin of exosomes, which as follows. Loading cargo into ILV involves the ESCRT and other related proteins. ESCRT includes PDCD6IP, also known as ALIX, TSG101, HRS, CD9, CD82, etc. In addition to the ESCRT that can recognize ubiquitinated proteins, other irrelevant mechanisms can also produce exosomes of certain biochemical components. For example, in some cells, the production of exosomes requires lipid ceramide and neutral sphingomyelinase an enzyme that converts sphingomyelin to ceramide. Related proteins include PLD2, DGK-alpha, etc. After MVB fuses with the cell membrane, exosomes are secreted. This process relies on small GTP nases such as RAB27A, B, RAB7, 11, 31, 35 in some cells or snares family proteins like YKT6, VAMP7, and so on. Microvesicles represent a relatively heterogeneous population of vesicles formed by the outward germination and fission of cell membranes, which can be controlled by membrane lipid microdomains and regulatory proteins such as ADP riboslation factor 6. Microvesicles get involved in antigen presentation and the transfer of MHC molecules and antigens, thereby participating in immune regulation. It is also possible to directly activate cell surface receptors through proteins and biologically active lipid ligands, transfer cell surface receptors or transfer effectors. 
including transcription factors, oncogenes, and infection particles, to recipient cells. What's more, various RNAs, including mRNA and miRNA, are contained in extracellular vesicles and are functionally delivered to recipient cells. Extracellular vesicles are generally taken as signal bodies for several core biological processes. To be specific, extracellular vesicles may participate in immune surveillance by activating immune responses or suppressing inflammatory responses in a tolerant manner. In blood circulation, extracellular vesicles participate in the coagulation cascade by providing the surface for coagulation factor assembly. Extracellular vesicles also get involved in the maintenance and plasticity of stem cells. Because of their characteristics of neovascularization, anti-apoptosis, and stimulation of cell proliferation, they seem to play a vital role in the repair of damaged tissues. Extracellular vesicles can be used as therapeutic agents because they are secreted by most cells, rich in RNA, and capable of transferring their contents to recipient cells. They are very suitable for drug delivery, especially for the delivery of therapeutic nucleic acids. However, extracellular vesicles can also participate in pathological conditions because of the competence of maintaining normal physiology. For example, extracellular vesicles can support tumor growth and tumor-related pathologies by inducing harmful immune tolerance, spreading oncogenes such as MET, initiating angiogenic procedures, and promoting metastasis. In the context of autoimmune diseases, extracellular vesicles can induce an immune response against autoantigens. Extracellular vesicle-mediated transfer of prion proteins and toxic protein aggregates can also regulate the progression of neurodegenerative diseases. In addition, the transfer of extracellular vesicle-bound viral material is relevant to HIV-1 infection. Extracellular vesicles are regarded as the targets for therapeutic intervention and useful diseases biomarkers because of their participation in the disease progression. After introducing the general role of exosomes, the function of exosomes in normal physiology and disease will be described in details next. Exosomes can regulate immune activities to support normal physiological processes. In early pregnancy, trophoblasts secrete exosomes to recruit and culture monocytes to initiate a pro-inflammatory microenvironment. These exosomes induce macrophage to synthesize and release pro-inflammatory cytokines, including IL-1 beta. It's essential for embryo implantation, angiogenesis, and matrix remodeling, which are associated with early pregnancy. In contrast to trophoblasts, other tissues such as prostate and placenta also secrete exosomes to weaken immune activity and promote normal physiological activities such as fertilization and pregnancy. EVs and semen and placenta explant secretions pass through NKG2D ligands to protect the sperm and fetus from immune attack by host tissues. This reduces the cytotoxicity of NK and CDA plus T cells to promote fertilization and pregnancy. In this figure, exosomes from immune cells and different known activities are clearly depicted. 1. Cells secrete exosomes carrying MHC class II peptide complexes as a means of antigen presentation to primed CD4 plus T cells. 2. Pathogens infected macrophages secrete exosomes with antigens. These exosomes induce the maturation of DCs and promote the secretion of pro inflammatory cytokines. 3. DC-derived exosomes carry MHC class I or class II peptide complexes, which can be directly recognized by pre-activated CD4 plus or CD8 plus T cells, or can be captured and presented by dendritic cells to activate naive T cells. The figure below shows exosomes from tumor cells, which can be immunosuppressive or activating. These exosomes exert certain immunosuppressive activities on T cells through carrying ligands. FASL, galactin 9 binding to FAS, TIM3 on CD4 plus activated T cells and promotes T cell apoptosis. TGF beta binds to corresponding antibodies on regulatory T cells, 
resulting in immunosuppression. The NKG2D ligand binds to NKG2D on NK cells, thereby inhibiting cytotoxic activity. Others inhibit the differentiation of DCs through unknown mechanisms or induce the differentiation of MDSCs. Finally, tumor cell-derived exosomes also carry tumor antigens that can trigger anti-tumor responses. The above-mentioned pathological conditions indicate that the progress of disease can be reduced by specifically inhibiting the production or release of extracellular vesicles, or by targeting the extracellular vesicle components and inhibiting their uptake. 1. Inhibiting the production of extracellular vesicles By blocking the formation of ceramide in the cells, treating the production cells with amelioride, interfering with stentanine syndicate interaction, or blocking the 4 transmembrane protein can reduce the production of extracellular vesicles. 2. Some studies have shown that by blocking certain RAB GTP nases, or ARF6, the release of extracellular vesicles can be reduced. 3. It can be advantageous to block certain extracellular vesicle binding receptors or lipids that mediate extracellular vesicle uptake or through cell surface receptor signaling. The figure below shows the use of exosomes as a therapeutic agent. The first one is antigen presentation for anti-cancer vaccines and elimination of infections. The second one is immune regulation applied for autoimmune and neurodegenerative diseases to treat immunosuppression or immune activation to treat cancer. The last one is tissue repair, mainly the regenerative medicine applications. The figure below shows the process of exosomal administration. It's mainly divided into three processes. Exosomes collection, sample preparation, and treatment. Sample preparation refers to the recombinant expression of targeted ligands and drug loading that is divided into endogenous loading and external loading of drugs by overexpressing therapeutic miRNAs and mRNAs. Supported by in-house scientists, an excellent technology platform, Creative Biolabs provides the best and comprehensive services covering exosome sampling, analysis, manufacturing, and exosome-based applications. Besides, we also provide a series of high-quality exosome-related products involving all aspects of exosome research, including exosome isolation and purification, exosome quantification, exosome antibody as well as exosome engineering to facilitate your project's success. If you want more information on exosomes, please contact us. Visit our website at www.creative-biolabs.com. Our number is 1-631-381-2994. Our fax number is 1-631-207-8356. Email us at info at creative-biolabs.com.